Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sunday Night Get Ready for the Week Group Chat. We got a lot to talk about today. Um, D, you let me down. Okay. I don't want to tell you why yet, but I'll get it (laughs) off my chest as soon as we get into the episode here. Um, We're going to obviously pop in on uh, Ukraine-Russia situation. Yep. Um, We're going to talk about salads. Big salad guy. Big salad. Big salad guy. Uh, we're going to talk about our, we, you know, we both had a little social outing uh, late last week. We actually came up with a way to div- uh, double the Revolve stock. We did. We talked a lot about Revolve and their success and how well they're doing. Turns out we just cracked how to double the stock yeah. uh, in the next five days. <laughs> um, okay. And then just general news. There's a lot to talk about, a lot going on. Uh, we're going to run the whole whole board here let's do it start the week off right let's do it cash ladies and gentlemen group chat cash cash it's a trillion dollars hot cash uh d i gotta talk to you all right uh look i don't i wouldn't say like you know I trust you. Okay. Like I say, I would say over the years, you've given me some pretty good guidance. Yeah. And usually when you say something, um, you know, I I believe it. Okay. But here we are, Sunday night, and the war's still raging. (laughs) And you told me that by Friday it would be over. I I was, I I did see a ceasefire Friday night. Did you get pumped? Yeah, I was like, oh my God, am I right? (laughs) Because it was just like a shot in the dark. Yeah. Because it said, fuck it, it's over. Yeah. And then I wake up in the morning, it says, Russia continues to shell. God Shelling is a big. I don't even know what shelling is. I think it's just dropping bombs, right? Why why don't. Like bombshells. Like shelling. I think it's when you're just like bombing i I don't know i think this is a new term exactly you know it feels like every war that comes by there's like these new i remember like scud missiles in persian gulf war yeah and it's just like in afghanistan it was drone strikes i think it's also what tactic you lean on the most and i think right now shelling is the big topic the big tactic yeah i have no idea what that means but we're still going i think there was a slight ceasefire because they were doing some talks right it's really uh uh, I think Prime Minister stepped went, in, st- went to Moscow. Uh, and they said no. It didn't so, seem like it was back to Shelley. <laughs> back to Shelley. Shelley Long. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, <laughs> here we go. I mean, we're still at it. I don't. It it feels kind of sketchy. Like I mean, I know that's like the no shit comment of the week, yeah. but I'm just saying like there's a lot. There's a growing call from our news people as well as some people in government to Intervene. actively get into. Hot war. I would be shocked if we do. Very, very shocked. Don't you feel like there could be some like, don't you feel like if the pressure just gets too big to where it seems, like people are calling calling Biden weak, they're saying blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but every time we butt ourselves into a war, it doesn't end well for us. I know we haven't learned yet. Yeah, I mean, Vietnam. <laughs> we're the kings of like, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Doing some shelling? Yeah. It's just, man, I just it don't feels see sketchy. the upside. It's like, uh, I don't know. It's not, our, it's not our business. All we can do is provide aid and provide support in, in other ways. The sanctions are going to be devastating. Yeah. Like Visa, MasterCard. Apple Pay. I saw a list. There's a list of like brands that it's like Nike. Everybody. Apple. It's an interesting like even new TikTok tactic. today. They did. Yes. <laughs> I thought China was his homie. I mean, wow. Because they said it was because of misinformation. So I don't know if you saw the Prisoner of War, uh, a Uk- uh, 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 that was on. I guess Ukrainian news it was a Russian prisoner of war in Ukraine, uh-huh. and he basically went on there and was saying like. We were told that like Nazi fascists were taking over Ukraine. Wow. Like he was like, we were duped. This is all bullshit. Damn. Um, I just don't know what to believe. You know, there's like a huge like fake news war happening too. Yes. Like there's a lot of like the ghost of Kiev and the yeah, yeah. the island where everyone was apparently told Russia to go fuck yourselves and then yeah. they all got murdered. There's just a lot of like even like 
even like the videos and the memes, I just don't believe anything. I know. Because I don't know, like, oh, Russian planes shot down, Ukrainian soldiers this, this person killed. And then like, there's no like, yeah, it's scary because the information is just, you don't know what to believe. Did you see that thing Anthony retweeted where it was a list of things? No. Anthony retweeted a guy who wrote like, here is literally a list of like, bombs going off this that whatever and then and then saying where it was actually from and like it wasn't from there it was from like earlier things or something in 2006 or like so it's all bullshit there's a lot of bullshit yeah it's crazy maybe there isn't even a war i don't know man i don't know what do we know anyone on. there <laughs> I, I haven't spoke to anyone i personally. know someone and he said he left right when it happened and he's he's very shook up about it but like he's gone he left the country it's just, it's weird in the internet age that yeah. like, it's a new, I think, cause I don't know, maybe I'm wrong here and I really don't want to be uh, misinforming about this topic, but like, I heard that it was sort of like a Ukrainian tactic to like get more help. Just show all these crazy. Yeah. Because we if all I'm vividly wrong, remember apologize. during COVID, the tanks that were coming into our cities. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that were like from 10 years ago. From everywhere. Like, <laughs> Remember like the trains of tanks just pouring in. Just every every idiot on social media was posting, that's it, it's over. Yeah, um, then I'd be law. like, did you, did you take that video? They're yeah. like, no, my friend posted it. I was like, yeah. It's Who's wild. your friend? Some Russian? Well, all I do know is there is, you know. By the way, Russia's the king of fake news. I know. They invented it. I know. But I feel like they're losing. Because their own people are finding yeah. out. They're getting yeah. over there and being like, where's the Nazis? Yeah. And they're getting really disheartened, it sounds like. Yeah. And meanwhile, Ukraine's crushing them on the fake news front. Yeah. And they're just sick. They just, like there's, like you said, the boxer, uh, Klitschko. Yeah, they have some good content. There's somebody else. Oh, there's another boxer. Um, oh, gosh. Sorry, Anthony. I'm blanking on his name. But <laughs> he's supposed to fight Anthony Joshua, and he's a heavyweight uh Ukrainian. Amazing boxer. Yeah. And, and he's like, I don't know if I'll be able to um, do the fight because I'm I'm here fighting, protecting. Yeah. And so like, I'm going to miss. What like, were you doing Friday night? I saw you. Were you just watching like high school kids beat each other up? Just beat the shit out of each <laughs> yeah. other. It's like a, like a string it fight. It was wild. It was wild. <laughs> so I go, I go to this. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching the video. I was like, watch. Like, I was beat so the shit out of each other. I was so pumped on the clip I got because it looked so violent. And I was like, it just looks like I'm just watching kids. <laughs> you just like have like a cock fight. Just yes. betting on like kids fighting. <laughs> it was a boxing gym I go to in North Hollywood. Would and they do they host a the night yeah they do like a lot of like um like um uh, like classes and stuff for people who will never be pro they just want to learn how to box but how old are those people the two that happen to be fighting there were probably <laughs> uh, <laughs> seventeen not, I mean the yeah kids, they're not eighteen the kids years mom old. was in the audience like go baby go <laughs> and and uh, but there was older people too and then they just they do one night like one Friday night a month just, beat just the let everyone beat the shit out of each other <laughs> and um, does anyone get hurt yeah. Really? Yeah, like not. I mean, I haven't seen anyone get hurt, hurt, but like. Why don't you get in there, beat up a little 17 crazy. year old? It's too crazy. Because <laughs> these kids, the whole gym, the whole rest of the gym is people screaming and beating on the mats. <laughs> and there's pros on each being the corner oh, coach, guy coaches. coaching. And then, and so people just want to be the star. And they're literally trying to I knock each other's I was literally laughing when I saw that clip. Because I was like, <laughs> they're trying to murder each other. Like there's not, there's no like, oh, chill, chill. Like they are trying to kill each other. Um, Anyways, you could check it out. What, what's another interesting thing this weekend that I noticed in LA, on a positive note, yep. I didn't wear a mask anywhere. At all. I didn't wear a mask in my Uber. Yep. I didn't wear a mask at the grocery store. Yep. I could not believe it. COVID felt over this weekend. It literally felt like it ended. Yep. Like, I, I truly believe it's completely over now. That I saw right. plenty of people wearing masks throughout the day. Yep. Which is fine. That's what you want to do. I don't give a shit. I think you'll see that for years. Yeah, forever. Like, yeah. I, I do believe people are going to wear masks forever. But, like, just walking to the grocery store, walking in here, rest, you know, wherever. The normal places we go yeah. as a family. It felt nice. Yeah, it was amazing. And it just, like, it felt like, like, it was, like, anticlimactic. It's, yeah. like. It's just over. It's yeah. over. No one even says the word COVID anymore. No. It's got to be over. What happens? Like a new variant that... But it doesn't matter. We're done. We're done. It would have to be so deadly. 
but that's not likely for a virus. Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know. I don't know if there's any scenario where people start wearing masks. People are just dying in the street and you're like, I'm fucking over. Yeah, it's just like you're walking down the sunset, oh, 433 dead. That's not me. I'm not putting a mask on. Because yeah. I don't, I mean, from what I know, which is very little, but viruses tend to get Recurrent. more transmissible, less deadly. Yeah. So it just doesn't seem likely that we're going to go backwards. Yeah, and, and I know people, like, you're not hearing anything about hospitalizations, COVID, no. no one's even talking about it anymore. It like literally just got wiped off. It's just Russia and Ukraine all day. Yeah, that's true. Also, yeah, I think that's probably part of why it's so over. Um, another interesting thing on the Russia-Ukraine thing, there was a clip on from Trevor Noah on Friday. Did you see it? Which one? Um, basically. I saw a Trevor Noah clip. I can't remember. Yeah, and, and the clip was really around like, how oh, people are reacting to like the European thing? Yes. Yep. That like these are Europeans. They're not like from Iraq or Afghanistan. Yeah. Like these basically insinuating these are white people. Yeah, like, white people don't fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like great people. Yeah. By the way, like I'm sure Ukrainians are fine, but Eastern Europeans don't have the best reputation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially when it comes to fighting. <laughs> no, or like anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but um, what do you you've think? You've seen about that? Taken, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just what they do I mean, <laughs> in your head. <laughs> in your when head, I think of just... Eastern European, I think of fucking Albanians from Liam Neeson just kicking their ass. Kids. Yeah. <laughs> what do you uh, What do you take of that clip? Do you think it's fucked up? I, I I do understand the the thing is is like I hate when race is brought into everything. Yeah. Because I think it just continues to polarize people. But it's a really interesting point because yeah. the way the media is spinning it is like. We would never have this much support if it was a Middle East country. Yeah. No fucking way. Yeah. Right? But because, and by the way, Russia and those parts of the country have done a lot of damage to America over the years. Yeah. It's not like they're innocent in like hurting Americans. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's Ukraine's, you know, part of Russia, like former USSR. Like it's, a sh that was a bad time in our history. Yeah. So, uh, but I get like the the people of Ukraine are going through something very very difficult right now, so we have to support. And we obviously no one wants to see innocent people die, but it is like the perception of how people are treated. Yeah, in this scenario, is so interesting. Like no, everyone stands with Ukraine no matter what. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like we're not we're not. But if it was, if it was like, you know, Afghanistan, like we would not be standing with Afghanistan. Yeah, we just wouldn't. Yeah, that is true. That is interesting. By the way, like Afghanistan is not the country that attacked <laughs> yeah. our country yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. You know, but when they had all their issues, we didn't do anything. It's just funny because I, I saw the clip. But I didn't even get time to like to get it, like to soak it in, you know? Yeah. And, and it's just it's interesting because like that is I think that continues to be the challenge for a lot of minorities in America is that like the double standard on how things are handled yeah. in, in times of crisis. Yeah, yeah, that makes um, sense. Which, which I get. Yeah. Um, but. Well, um, at the end of the day, it goes without saying, it's just a bummer. I, I just, you can't help but obviously feel bad for the Ukrainian, especially the Ukrainian civilians. Like it's, it's just. Yeah, it's terrible. To it's, see the clips and any the, like, Any country that it has to deal with this shit it's fucking terrible. And you know yeah. how many countries are dealing with this stuff yeah. always? Yeah, that's Like true. all over the world. Yeah, we're like, so lucky. Yeah, we live in... It's really interesting. I was just thinking about, I, you know, we have a globe in our house for our kids. And I was just staring at it today and I was like, fuck, the way America is situated in the world, two of the biggest oceans on each side... Yeah. You can't touch us. Oh, there's a TikTok about... Oh, no, there's a Joe Rogan post. Oh, okay. There's a Joe Rogan post about like... Canada supporting us. Here's the different parts of the country that are tough. You know, like the hunters are here. The yeah. Navy SEALs are in San Diego. Yeah, yeah. Then it's like Portland, Oregon. Like, ah, this part wouldn't be so hard. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then Mexico. Like, we're really like... Insulated. Yeah. It's it's really safe. Um, okay. Well, I, I have to bring this up. I, it's it's in the LA Times, so I'm not, I'm not the one putting it on blast. Yep. But uh, Rich from Fashion Nova just bought a $141 million house. No. Yes. Where? <laughs> in Bel Air. So I don't know if you've been following this house. It was called The One. It was listed for $295 million. It was like the most expensive house. And it, no one bought it. Uh-huh. And finally... 
Uh, LA Times reported just now that uh, uh, it was got sold to Rich for $141 million. It's 105,000 square feet. 105,000 square feet. Do you know how many square feet that is? I'm I don't know how big is the Staples Center. Is the Staples Center that big? That is so big. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm looking at it as we speak. Yeah. This is a joke. Yeah. <laughs> There's like seven pools. I know. He's like, you got to come see it. He's like, the pictures don't do it justice. I'm like, I believe it. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, props. To, think about all the people that live like up in that hill in Bel Air and, and what they all do. Yep. And then just think about the Fashion Nova fucking empire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like uh, at the one. I mean, I, I was just thinking about it from the perspective of like, there's all these tech billionaires that live in LA that are supposedly revolutionizing the world. Yeah. They just got shit on by a fashion guy, like Fashion Nova guy. I'm reading a, actually a paragraph here that says, it was well under the California record set by venture capitalist Mark Andreessen. Yeah. Who purchased a Malibu estate for 177? So Mark and Dreesen, Rich and Fashionova. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the two. I mean, congratulations. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit is right. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. All right. Well, that's a good opener. Yeah. I mean, he's a low key guy. So I, I'm surprised they even leaked. But his last house was pretty wild, too. Yeah. <laughs> but this is like. This isn't a house. 7X. Yeah. That. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow, the Fashion Nova empire, man. It's a, it's just incredible. What's interesting is, is when you think about, like, take fashion, for example, there's only two places in fashion where you're seeing extreme wealth, either luxury with, like, Bernard Arnault yeah. or very inexpensive, like which is fan. the Zara guy, now rich. Yeah. You can't be in the middle. You die in the middle. You die in the middle. Yeah. You're in the middle. You're just toast. Oh, man. Okay. Good for him. Yeah. What a win. Dude, let's take one quick second uh, to talk about ClickUp. You know, I think one of the big things with like working remote and, you know, the transition that happened during COVID time is like, you know, project management tools and that stuff started becoming even more popular. I know I've tried to wrap my head around them, but there's, you know, there's a million different options and there's one for this thing, one for that thing. There's like a million different apps and platforms that you have to have. Uh, ClickUp solves all that. This is perfect for you. I feel like you're a I love a good, good app platform. <laughs> good platform, yeah. Especially an organizational platform. I've got seven of them on my phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I just find the right one, I know what's going on. So now you can just put it all. ClickUp uh, kind of syncs with everybody and makes it so easy to work with teams across uh, different functions. Got it. Easy to use interface. And by the way, Chris, who was on the pod, his story is amazing. The company's story is amazing. And more importantly, one of their key uh, marketing tactics was around rapping. So you have to at least give it a shot just based on that. Like R-A-P? R-A-P. Rapping. Yeah. About ClickUp. ClickUp. <laughs> okay. I think ClickUp is also a term for like meeting up with the homies. I mean. ClickUp. Yeah, ClickUp. Okay. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> click up at work and click up afterward. Um, so okay, head on great. over to click up. Uh, if, if you have an organization, one, two, or a thousand, give it a shot. It actually, he used a really good example of like why like our family should be on click up just oh. to keep the whole family organized. So it's not just for the work. Yeah. Click. So uh, I was talking to my wife about it. So she was checking it out because I was like, imagine if we just put all of our family members on here. Yeah, click Holidays up. and this, that. and Nannies. Nannies. Yeah. <laughs> Baby, babysitters we don't want to watch. <laughs> Project. Need for someone to watch the kids. <laughs> Anyone open. Except. Click up. <laughs> click up. <laughs> Love it. Uh, do we have any sort of offer? Well, they have plans that are absolutely free. Oh, so you don't even need us. You don't even need us. So go. use the free option. Give it a shot. And they have other options if you're a bigger organization. But for free, click I mean, up. Click up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Let's get back into the episode. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about someone else who's winning. Sweet Green. Yeah. So Sweet Green is, you know, they recently IPO'd. Uh, we, you know, we joked about them. Uh, just for all in good fun. I don't think 
think maybe we made fun of the valuation for being like a salad shop, but you know, hey, <laughs> all in good fun. <laughs> um, they've been crushing it. I mean, they had their first earnings report since their IPO. The uh, sales are up. Only problem is uh, losses up too. Yeah. So, you know, that's a thing. But look, first earnings report, uh, IPO, a big IPO, big big valuation, and stocks up. Salads are hot. I mean, the company lost sixty six million dollars. What was sales in the fourth quarter? On sales of ninety six million, mm. and the stock went up. You know I, what's funny? Is I like, know a lot of. I have a lot of friends involved in this company, but I'd be very cautious here. <laughs> I yeah I just look our joke isn't actually far off like you know how we joke about like if you're not losing money you're not trying hard enough <laughs> yeah. that's like a real like thought you know they did 96 million so let's just say this year they pull off 400 something million dollars yeah. they're valued at 2.9 billion but losing money and they sell salads 2.9 billion at 400 and it's salads what do you think the sale is? Salads plus ninety six million. <laughs> like, well, yeah, exactly. The iceberg lettuce crouton plus ninety six. What do you think the selling point is? Like, is it like how are you? How, what what are you selling to investors? You're selling more than salads to investors. No, you're not actually. What do you think you're selling? So who who's who's who who? Where's this money coming from? It's coming from institutions. Healthy people. Where are institutions situated? New York City. What do they do when they go for lunch? They grab a sweet green. This is exactly simple? Peloton. Yeah. This is literally Peloton 2.0, where it's proximity bias by the people that invest this money. You know, the fat banker that's walking down and he's like, eh, I see the line at sweet green. <laughs> On his way past. Yeah, he's not eating that, but like, <laughs> like hey, we should invest in that. Yeah, he's like, what's up with this I'll long be, I'll line? I'll be at the burger, I'll be at Shake Shack. Uh, yeah, exactly. So it's like, I think I think they believe that what Sweet Green is doing for food is revolutionary. I think their digital product of Sweet Green is unbelievable. Like their app, the way you order, the experience, the food, it's all fantastic. I actually don't have anything bad to say about the company. Mm -hmm. But you lost 66 million bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I look, I mean, but the stock's up. Yeah, it's great. So the market doesn't care. Market doesn't care. This is why I I'm, I really do not understand. Uh, I know it's really short term and hard to even call this anything, but like Revolve didn't get really rewarded. And they're shitting growth and profit. Yes. <laughs> like in an absurd way. Yeah. <laughs> and, but Sweetgreen does like instantly. Yeah. yeah. Proximity. Proximity. Salads. Yeah, because yeah, like the banker doesn't walk down and get to go to the Revolve event He's we got to Coachella. go to. Yeah. Imagine Ooh. if that banker, the Wall Street banker, yeah. the guy at Fidelity or T. Rowe Price, yep. walks down from his office and went to the event we Sees went Kim to. Kim Kardashian, Fezco. Uh, I think it's up 40% the next day. I mean, no joke. 99% yeah. of the most beautiful women on earth. Yeah, literally. Just, just standing there. <laughs> Imagine yes. to an old banker. It's like, all right, well. Okay, this, I'm telling you. I'm giving you guys a free one, Revolve. You got to open like a Tribeca, not yeah. Soho, as far downtown as possible. Yep. Like Battery Park pop-up. Just do the same thing you did here. Do same thing. Get those same people. Yeah. Spend $10 million and bring them all there. Yeah. These bankers would lose their head if they saw this. Yeah. We get, we're spoiled because we live in LA and we get to see this. Yeah. If a banker's, all the banker gets to see is a line at Sweet Green. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I guess that's where the action's at. <laughs> yeah. They see some good looking people at Sweet Green. Yeah. They're like, oh, Gen Z loves Sweet Green. Yeah, that's probably the it's best future. looking people they saw all week. All week. Yeah. <laughs> and then you walk into this Revolve event. That looks like nothing. By the way, if you're in LA, Revolve Social Club, it's on Melrose. It's across from like All Saints. Is that? No, what is that? What's it across from? Rag and uh, Glossier. Glossier. Glossier is caddy corner. Too, okay. Right? We went there. So for the listener, we went there on, was that Friday night? No. Thursday night? Yeah, Thursday or Wednesday. Not since we filmed though, or recorded. Oh yeah, yeah, maybe Thursday night. Okay, so either way, we went there. So Revolve opened this like social club. It's like a marketing, you know, a, sh a store slash showroom slash club for uh, 
for uh, Cus- uh, their customers. Yeah, certain customers. If you, like if you spend a certain amount, you get yeah. like an invite or something. Uh, and for influencers, and it was bananas. Uh, bananas. I mean, it's just like this thing is completely rebuilt. Built out the whole thing. It's the most beautiful, like, store, you know, thing. It's like a casual, like, olive tree just sitting in the middle. Sitting in the middle. And then it's literally Kim Kardashian, Fez from Euphoria. Like That every... guy's the hottest guy in the world. Absolutely. I saw him at the Mike and Mary fashion show. Yeah. People were losing it. And yep. I did not, I not know. They said people went, like, just as crazy about Kim as they did on him at the Revolve thing. Yeah, I Like, believe. all the girls were asking for pictures. Yeah. Euphoria is hot. Euphoria is just... Euphoria is like, uh, it's it. It's, it's like it. the Top show. of the top. I actually, interesting enough, I was looking at the recap on Revolve social media of all their posts. Yeah. And the most liked pick was with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Is Fez his real name or his character That's name? That's his character. His name is... Angus or something? Angus Cloud. Interesting name. Pretty dope. Yeah. <laughs> um, but and he's only on Euphoria. Yeah. Only a notable thing. He's just, he's a star of Euphoria. And like he... Um, he's like a high school kid on Euphoria. He's a, he's a drug dealer. But is he a high school student yeah. at the school? Yeah. Got it. Uh, but either way, it was just bananas. I mean, it was just packed with like every influencer. There was like three guys there. Yeah, me, you. <laughs> Anand was there for a while and Michael Mente. Anand had to swap out because yeah, yeah. another guy was I, I walked in, so Anand had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> the guy quota of four. And, uh, it's and, really crazy. I wonder if they just don't invite guys or they don't know any guys. I don't think they know guys. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> no one wants to know guys. Boring. Boring. You need to know four. Yeah. You need to know four good guys. <laughs> and then keep swapping them in and yeah. out. But yeah, it was just bananas. I mean, props to them. It was, they always do everything next level, but I just feel like they're, you know, they've, they really took off even more than they already had over pandemic and stuff like that. And now I just feel like they can flex on a level that's just insane. Yeah. I got a B12 shot. I had a yeah. margarita. I had a face jump. gym. Girls getting, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't even know face what that massage. is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was incredible. So props <laughs> to them. And uh, yeah, put that thing in Tribeca and your stock doubles. I literally think it does. Yeah. I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> um, Okay, so Sweet Green's popping. Yep. Uh, next up, Ethereum is making a big move. They're about to launch Ethereum 2.0. Yep. And the big thing is that they're moving from proof of stake, uh, sorry, moving from proof of work yep. to proof of stake. Yep. And so everyone's kind of geared up. All the Ethereum you know, heads are like, this is going to be huge. Yeah. We're taking off. Uh what do we, I mean, so proof, proof of, of work to proof of stake, what's it mean? What, what are we doing? So um, the whole idea of proof of stake is that it'll, it'll use less computing power. It'll be faster, more secure. It's also expected to have lower transaction cost and supply. So all of those should be good signs for the price to go up. Got it. That they're going to burn tokens off. Because um, right now... At, with proof of work, the cost to do anything is too expensive. I haven't yeah. bought, I mean, a, NFTs for me, I've just like blocked out of my. You're out. I'm out. I'm done. Yeah. What's interesting, remember Will? Who yeah. used to, so Will was like a big NFT guy. Yeah. And at Mun Club today, on Saturday, I was like, what's going on with your NFTs? He's like a big NFT guy. He's like, honestly, I'm out of all of it. It's a waste of time. He's really? Because like, in his eyes, he's like, I was spending so much mind share yeah. thinking about it all day, every day. You know, if you own an NFT, like I own some few. Oh, everybody run to the Discord and claim the, blah, 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 claim yeah. your prize and fucking eat nachos or it's whatever. Just so it's like, it's too much shit. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. too much shit all the time. Yeah. And it's like, it's a job owning an NFT. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So you're just constantly managing it, seeing what's going on, seeing if the market goes up and you can sell it. But it wasn't the whole thought, like, for, especially for a guy like Will, it's so, the payoff is so big that it's worth making it a job. Yeah, he, he, he countered it by saying that because he's not wasting his time on that, he's doing better at work. <laughs> That's fair. So that must mean there's a brighter future for work <laughs> yeah. than his NFTs. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like, man, I feel like we got duped. I feel like the NFT Web3 bonanza that happened three months ago was bullshit. It was. (laughs) It was literally like maybe one day. I think maybe one day is absolutely right. I do believe it's – I do believe there's a future for it. But the hysteria of just like – It's all we were talking about. Facebook changed their whole name. Yeah. 
It was like, oh shit, okay, this is here all of a sudden, and I'm stupid for not knowing. Yeah. And then now we're just back to yeah. web two. I think Tyler, the creator, was in an interview. Yeah, that went and, viral. And he said like, something. He's like, I'm playing no monkey with the Supreme. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what the <laughs> fuck is an NFT? <laughs> he was saying, like, I could understand. He was joking by, well, kind of by saying, like, I go outside and, like, ride my bike and, like, what the fuck is an NFT? And then. He was saying, like, I would understand if it was actually cool art. Like, a great artist was making – that would kind of make sense. But it's a fucking monkey with a Supreme hoodie. <laughs> I saw that. I was dying. <laughs> yeah. I don't – I mean, we just got ahead of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's all a donut. It's a donut. I, I think, look, it's good to know. And one day it will probably be really valuable. But I don't, I don't think we're there yet. No. Okay. Um. We have an article here, which I didn't read on purpose because I wanted to ask you. And the article, essentially title, is how soon is too soon to quit a new job you hate? Now, this is a good topic because, you know, we just had the great resignation. Mm -hmm. I think quitting jobs is hotter than ever. Um, It seems like, I don't know this stat for real, but it seems like more jobs were quit over the last year than ever in history. Um, But, you know, this is a good think piece about... Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty funny to hear what uh, millennial and Gen Zs. Um, so, seventy-two percent of millennial and Gen Z job seekers have felt this sense of surprise or regret that a new job or company was very different from what they were led to believe. Okay, so, I mean, why? Because you, you had to fucking on work. Instagram. <laughs> yeah, on Instagram, like this would be sick. I think everyone thinks like their job is going to be like the revolve event. Yeah, and you know how hard everyone had to work who put together that event? No, no, not the people who worked there. They think like – Exactly, the they're, influencer. The, the influencer. They're going to be Fez. Fez. Yeah. They think their job is like I just walk in and everyone shows me love. Yeah, and they just, just like, throw money at me and <laughs> girls ask to take pictures. Yeah, Got Fez. It. Yeah. Um, but then they, they surveyed like 2,500 people and they said uh, 20% said they'd quit a job within a month or less. If it turned out differently than what was advertised, 41% would give it two to six months and 15% would give it seven to 11 months. Just 24% would try to stick it out a bad job for a year before moving on. What I I don't think young people understand is if you go take that job and you don't last a year, your resume looks fucked up. I've seen so many resumes lately that are like, it's like a 22 year old with seven jobs. <laughs> Has more job experience than a 30, a 50 year old. Literally. And I'm like, what the, what is happening? Jan to Feb 2020. Literally. March. Feb to, to Feb 15. <laughs> didn't love, didn't love it. Glossier from March to April. Yeah. Uh, literally. May to June. I was at Shopify. I was in a July to August. April I was at Uber. <laughs> it's literally, it's just, I don't know, man. I mean, I think um, I. I'll be honest. There was a part. There was a part of during this thing where I felt like, well, maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm getting old, and like you, you know, it's more mobile these days. I don't think that's the case. I think the attention span and the expectations and the all that stuff are just insane. I saw a founder post that something to the effect of around um, this. Uh, uh, investor questioned why I was on vacation and, um, you know, I need to work on my mental health. Back to this margarita for me, right? This a founder said that on Twitter. That was a post? Yeah, something to that effect. I, I, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, yeah. But when I saw that, like, if I'm, if what I'm doing on social media is affecting my business then don't fucking post it like it's very simple right yeah the other piece is i think too many people are using mental health as an excuse to get out of things i agree there are plenty of people that have mental health issues but like you can't use it for everything that means if 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 100 percent of society is suffering from mental health issues then it's no longer an issue yeah because that's everybody yeah it should be like i don't believe that 100 percent of people are suffering from mental health issues i think it's true i think that 
And that's a tough, tough predicament because there are people that really suffer with it. And those people do need to like take the time and get the help. But I do think it's easy to confuse tired or unhappiness. Yeah. Like, oh, my life sucks because my girlfriend dumped me. Yeah. A lot of that is that. Or it's just delayed gratification yeah, is yeah. the thing that I think is getting like wiped away. Yeah, you see Rich's $141 million yeah. house. I have an e-commerce company. Like, I've been in <laughs> Glossier for six months. Where's <laughs> mine? Like I've been grinding away on this drop shipping business yeah. and Rich has a $141 million house. Exactly. Yeah, but you don't happening. know what Rich has gone through. 20 years of fucking blood, sweat, and shit. Exactly. That's, I, I really feel like the instant gratification thing, like, it, I don't know, it just... It was always like you grind it out for decades in hopes that one day you can live in Rich's old house. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even going to say his house currently. That's just yeah. absurd. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like you hope one day it can all pay off. And not can... even the old house. The one house before that. Yeah, wherever he was. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wherever he was at in 2014. Because his last house is Avicii's old house. Yeah. So. <laughs> Okay, the one before that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like it was always that. It was always like I'm grinding it out to hopefully yeah. when I'm 40, like yeah. be able to have a nice life. Yeah. And I just feel like it seems like um, there's an expectation that you should be able to have it after it seems like six months <laughs> <laughs> or you're quitting. I don't know. But we'll see. I mean, maybe, maybe in some way we're the boomers here, but it doesn't seem it doesn't seem to be panning out. Like I don't see a lot of people – winning with that strategy no okay on to the next one you know who is winning uh robert pattinson zoe kravitz and the batman gang i got that right right those are the stars yeah um uh, batman 128.5 million dollars at the domestic box office which makes it the second highest uh, movie opening since, you know, we'll say pandemic era, 2020 and to now. Yeah. Did Batman you watch it? No, it was on streaming? No, it was on, you know. Theaters? The real thing. Yeah, no chance. <laughs> Zero chance. On and uh, went. On and did say it was going to go. In three hours, he said it was. It was three hours long? Through two hours and 56 minutes. <laughs> he was Batman telling uh, Anthony and I that he was going. And Anthony's like, damn, you're going to come out tomorrow because he was going like at <laughs> 9 o'clock. <laughs> Literally. Is he a Batman fan? Uh, he just likes the theater. Yeah, I think he's a theater fan. And this is like a big movie. Three hours is ridiculous in this era. That you, feels like... You know Netflix has a section that I frequent on like a Saturday night if we're home. 10 minute 90 movies. minute movies. Is it? Yeah, 90 minute movies. Who wants to watch a three-hour anything? I mean, a Gen Zer can start and quit a job in the time it takes to watch Batman. <laughs> <laughs> it's just absurd. I, I, that's, I mean, props to Anna. I feel like he did a marathon. Um, he didn't say it was great. Really? Yeah. Did he say it was bad? Everyone's saying it's a great movie. Here's the thing. Did he say it was mediocre? Did he say he just didn't say? He just, yeah, he just, I don't think he said it was that good. He yeah. was like, it was overhyped. Um, here's my thing. Sorry for all my British folks. Uh -oh. Batman needs to be American. Oh. Oh. You're going full... MAGA. Full nationalist. <laughs> yeah, <here>. nationalist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you think that... Well, but look at the numbers. Yeah, because it's Batman. He, he, here's the other thing. What are the top two movies? Spider-Man, Batman. We don't want real people. We want superheroes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. We're sick of real people. Yeah, we They're hate real people. They're fucking going to war. And... There's a grown-ass man flying around in a bat costume. Yeah. That's what we're interested in. Plus or the... another guy who looks like a spider. Well, he's saving the day. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> but he's saving the day. Maybe we, we need a superhero at the moment. We're in yeah. need. We want Robert Pattinson to come swooping in and stop you from getting ripped out of your car on Melrose. <laughs> and your Rolex stolen. <laughs> I mean, Gotham City's L.A., so it's perfect. Yeah, I, yeah. I've heard New York, you know, has similar problems. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was just, uh, I don't know how he's going to be ranked as a Batman, but Christian Bale was a tough one to follow. You think that's top? <clears throat> I don't know the list of Batmans, to be honest. I can't. I don't know him either. Val just, Kilmer, mm. uh, Michael Keaton. Um, so Robert Pattinson didn't Did do Ben it. Affleck play Batman, I think? Did he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That guy is not Batman. <laughs> you don't like him? Ben he Affleck? Seems, he seems superhero-y. 
Maybe not that photo of him with the yeah, cigarette. The Dunkin' that. Donuts picture really ruined it for me. <laughs> well, you know, you clean him up. And, you know, Christian Bale's like screaming at his kids. You're yeah. like, that I can, that's superhero. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see Robert Pattinson. Like, does he seem Is he super, buff? superhero y? Like, is he going to save the day? I don't think he's buff. He's not buff? The buff is out. Is he just Davidson. scrawny, scrawny? Pete like... Davidson's in. <laughs> The scrawnier the better. Yeah, I don't know. But either way, I mean, 120 How's he fighting whatever. crime? I think he just talks it out. And he just says, guys, let's be let's have some empathy here. He's a Gen Z Batman. Yeah. He's he like, guys, who wants to get canceled? Uh, I didn't think so. Let's pack it up. Penguin, Riddler, sit down. Let's have a conversation. Sit down. Come on. <laughs> let's go. Um, but 128 whatever million. I mean, they did it. Yeah, it worked. Numbers, yeah, I mean, especially at a three-hour movie. Yeah. It's wild how, like, on one side... Things can't be short enough, and then on the other side, you can go sell a three-hour movie. Yeah, who's I, watching that? You're telling me these same Gen Zers who can't. No, I don't think it's Gen Zers that are watching this movie. It's all on and age. Yeah, it's Gen X living the millennial, living the good old days, <laughs> yeah. waiting for a Batman to come say. Yeah, that. I mean, I think you I mean I I would assume do kids like superheroes or it's like an old people thing now? It's like your average. Do you guys like superheroes? Love superheroes. Yeah, I love them. Okay. The Marvel ones. Okay. The DC comics are a little dark. How are Whatever. You guys, you guys are low 20s? Yeah. 25. Yeah, 21. we're out of the loop. Yeah, they all love it. That was instant, overwhelming, yes. Yeah, okay, forget it. I mean... What do you guys think about Robert Pattinson as a Batman? Eh. Eh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Uh, I think Michael B. Jordan would be Batman. Michael B. Jordan and Will Smith are coming together for I Am Legend 2. Yeah, I'm down with that. That's pretty cool. I'm surprised Michael B. Jordan wasn't Batman. He's like a buff. You're right. He's a much better Batman. Yeah. I just don't believe it. I believe Michael B. Jordan could beat up Robert Pattinson as Batman. <laughs> yeah, like he's a bitch. You take Michael B. Jordan from Creed would beat up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Robert Pattinson as Batman. I think you just have to be at least somewhat like bulky. Yeah, that might be out though. It's too much brute force. What are you, Putin? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Putin's a midget. He's trying to dominate people. Putin's this well, he doesn't dumb. act like it. Don't tell him that with his <laughs> shelling. All right. Brittany Griner, uh, WNBA star. Yep. Her wife went to Russia, got caught with a vape pen. Pretty with, normal. With cannabis, though, right? Yeah. Sorry. Vape pen with THC. Um, has been... Arrested and is being held. For three weeks. For three weeks. So Brittany is trying, you know, pleading to get her out and get her safely removed. I think people are nervous that this could somehow be used sort of like almost like a hostage, you know, like um, in the war situation. It is a little bit of leverage. I mean, you know, we're doing all these sanctions and everything. You have a you have a move there. Uh, but I mean, scary situation. I. For yeah. flying, like, I mean, we know people who have flown and taken a vape pen and it's not really a big deal. Far and, worse. And how do you, you know, <laughs> how do you, I, it just seems pretty like easy to fly under the radar with a vape pen. So two things. One is she was there because she's apparently in a European basketball league mm. and she's on a Russian team. She's been going there since 2016. Being that she must know the law. I'm sure. Okay. Like, I remember when I f was going to Dubai, I checked my bag 500 <laughs> times for just for anything. <laughs> like, I didn't want anything in my bag Nothing. just from some previous trip, like some random joint. Not even and... like a picture of you kissing <laughs> Haley. <Yeah. laughs> like, I do not... not know this white blonde woman. <laughs> <laughs> just no affection, no I'm nothing. not down with this infidel. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, but yeah, know. like I'm playing it safe. Yeah, I just I'm. But you know, sorry. I mean, but you know, yeah. You go so many times. You're like, oh, I bet I could take my pen. Yeah, the pen gets through seven times. Yeah, I mean, we know we've been. Yeah, we've been in those situations. Yeah, and it's like ah, it's a pen. And you just get caught up. I remember one time I went to Colombia for a friend's bachelor party and leaving Colombia mm -hmm. the what they did to my bag <laughs> they violated it <laughs> the customs yes uh, leaving to check yes uh, like 
I have one of those like um, to me tech backpacks. I don't know what they're called. Mm -hmm. It has like 600 pockets in it, mm -hmm. right? So there's just shit in all these pockets. They just went through everyone. Took all my shit out. Took, was checking every little crevice. Like all my stuff was on the table, like in the middle of the fucking area. And that was their customs? Their customs. Why do they care? You're leaving. I'm like, I'm leaving. <laughs> Whatever you have, take it. <laughs> They're dying to just catch an American, probably wow. with drugs. So do you think maybe they ratcheted it up because of everything like going on? I mean, this was a little bit before I'm that. sure they knew who she was. She's a very high profile American in Russia. Yeah. And now the State Department of America is saying Putin's going to use this as like a bargaining chip. Yeah. Because he has a high profile hostage. I feel bad though. I mean, imagine if that was one of our friends or. No, it's it terrible. Could very easily happen. And it's like, damn. Like, yes, you were wrong and you knew it was risky, but damn it. Like, no one thinks you're going to be locked up in a Russian jail for three weeks. And, and like, what is the reason to release her yeah. unless Russia gets something from the Americans? Like, what do the Americans have to give up to get her released? Yeah. And are they going to do it? Yeah, that's a dangerous. That would just suck. It's literally just like worst case scenario. Yeah. Because then you just don't know. I mean, I'm sure like what, she, what information is she getting? Nothing about where her wife is? Yeah. I mean, it's got to be the U.S. government just sharing like yeah. I, I'd, I'd be shocked if she's allowed to communicate with her. Yeah. That's gnarly. Maybe she can hang out with Snowden. Is he in Russia? Yeah. He's been hiding there for years. I forgot where he was these days. He's very quiet now. That big mouth. You better be right yeah. now. Okay. Um, you want to talk about tax uh, refunds? Yeah. Okay. The IRS uh, has sent nearly 30 million tax refunds uh, so far. Um, but here's the thing. there, The amount of the refunds is up. You know, we're obviously in the billions, right? Like 120-something billion. Yeah. But the amount of each refund is up uh, 600 and something dollars on average. Um, from the usual, why why is that? What's going on? Is this like a post COVID thing? Or? The average refund right now is thirty four hundred dollars uh, through February twenty fifth, and last year it was twenty eight hundred dollars. Uh, I don't I don't know any other reason that p incomes have increased, and so maybe weird deductions have increased. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't give any good explanation. There's no ex explanation of why it's gone up. It mm -hmm. just says that, you know, the, the the dollar amount has increased. Here's the thing. That's a good thing. Thirty six hundred more dollars to like tens of millions of Americans yeah. means it's going to get spent. Yeah. The problem is, I don't know if you saw this, gas in L.A. in some places is $7. Literally, that'll get you one tank. <laughs> Congrats I, on your refund. I, I, it's, I had to, I was, I, I, my, I, I had to get gas this weekend. I finally. Oh, you had to give in. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Just burning around town. I was literally. It was like I could. It was like car was like creaking. Yeah. Like I was like fuck. So you're gasping. <laughs> yeah. And finally, I like strolled in, and it was like I don't know, hundred and eighteen dollars to fill up my car. What was it per gallon? And the one near my house was over five. But like the ones, the ripoff ones are seven. Yeah, the ripoff ones. I think I paid 550. Why do those ripoff ones exist? Just because they're in Beverly Hills in a place where you're not around a lot of guys. Yeah, so wherever there's a, uh, um, in those locations that basically don't have any other gas stations, high profile location, they know that they can charge it. Yeah. Because there's Good no, there's nothing else. It's just like assistants filling up cars. For <laughs> yeah. <other people>. um, <laughs> that's yeah, you're right. I mean, so who cares? I heard a lot of people this weekend complain about gas. You know, it I didn't hear a lot such, of COVID, but I heard a lot of that. I mean, look, depending on how much money you make, all of a sudden gas was like at four something dollars like a month ago, yeah. and now it's at seven yeah. or six. Yeah, and you're getting gas constantly. I know most people. I would assume most people's driving habits have been reduced drastically. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it, it's as big of a problem as it was like, you know, three years ago of this yeah. gas, gas price. Do you remember when COVID started, gas was negative? Like it was, it was literally w worthless. It, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, the yeah. price was to take the physical possession of the gas was more than the gas itself, yeah. the crude oil. Yeah. 
And so many people thought this was it. This is the future. It, it's going to be um, low crude oil, crude oil prices forever. Yeah. Crude oil hit $130. I here's the other thing though to your point though I think that a lot of people got used to the new normal so naturally you know you know how like most people spend is like okay gas is going to cost me this much on average let's say you know whatever 200 bucks a month or something and so here's the rest of my living expenses to get me to zero and now all of a sudden if gas goes up it's still going to interfere with other Shit, or or you're gonna cancel things that you used to do. Yeah, like I'd be curious. So spring break is coming up for kids. Does that affect how kids or families? The big test will be Memorial Day weekend. Is it affecting plane tickets? Of course, it's going to. There's gonna be the craziest. But this all currently. happened in the last month. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a delay. yeah. There'll be a lag. Fuel surcharge on planes is gonna be nuts. It's gonna be nuts. Nuts. When spring break, like two weeks from now, starting? Yeah, I'm sure it already started in some in some states. Yeah, I bet you that's when you'll feel the hit. Because yeah. think of how many people, like where I'm from and stuff like that, that like drive to Myrtle Beach or Atlantic yeah. City. If you're driving, let's say, 300 miles and you get, I don't know, 20 miles to the tank, to the gallon. Yeah. That's so much more money yeah. you're spending to just go somewhere. Yeah. I, I heard, I don't know why, I, I forget like where, like it's just in my... Being around, I just heard people complaining, complaining about gas. I I was shocked when I when I was like on my phone, I wasn't paying attention. Then when it was done, it was like I don't know, like one hundred and nineteen dollars. I was like, fuck! I could take my entire family out to dinner, and I can get drunk. Yeah, and it's one hundred and nineteen dollars. Yeah. yeah, but you can't get there. <laughs> yeah. Or home. Can't get there. <laughs> <laughs> you have to order Postmates and fucking get some alcohol at home. I, yeah, I think it and just feels to me like we're really not only does it feel sketchy because of everything going on in in Russia and Ukraine from a physical war point of view, but it just feels like we're like teetering on the edge of like real financial market trouble. And the other thing is, is wheat prices have shot through the roof. Is that because we of hit sanctions? a record? So doesn't a lot of wheat come from Russia? So yeah, it does. Uh, hit record highs as war halt exports from Ukraine and Russia. The other problem is there was a drought last year. Mm. So domestically, there just wasn't enough wheat produced. Mm, got it. So a combination of both. That's bad. It's just it's, we're in a weird spot. We were hot. Like 30 days ago, oh, hot. We were, we were set up to finally Get have like this. a spring of just nothing but fun. Yeah. I don't think anything stops Coachella. I think it's untouchable. No, untouchable. I, especially given that it's Kanye closing it out, it feels even more untouchable. I mean, there could be tanks in the streets in Palm Springs and Coachella would be packed. I would be there. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be like on the way out. I don't know. There's some shelling going on <laughs> yeah. down on fucking 50. But ye I saw yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! Okay, uh, last news story. Uh, how often do you how often do you get babysitters? We can't. Why? If my mom cannot watch our kids, yeah, we physically cannot get a babysitter. Oh, they're too hard to find. Impossible. Literally impossible to get a babysitter in LA. Okay, well that's right on topic because apparently the rates that you have to pay babysitters are through the roof. So that must have been basic supply and demand here. I'm guessing good babysitters are able to just charge an arm and a leg. And so we would offer $25 an hour for a babysitter yeah. and we cannot find one. Uh, nanny, like our nanny only will stay till 530 because she has a family. So that's it. So if we want to do anything in the evenings, weekdays, weekends, yeah. If my mom is not available, that's it. We cannot fucking do anything. Do you think that's what is that? Do so many people get comfortable? No, so many people were around their kids too much over COVID, and now everyone's getting babysitters. What happened? I think it is a bit of that where, like, all of a sudden, everyone wants to do stuff. Yeah. Without their kids. Yeah. That's a big part of it. Two years of being next to your kid. I also think a lot of people just kind of woke up and said, I don't want to be a babysitter anymore, or I don't want to do that anymore. Like uh -huh. a babysitting job was definitely like a young person's job. Yeah. But they're not doing that. What are they doing? Trading NFTs? <laughs> I don't know. Anyone trading NFTs, I don't want them to watch my children. 
It's true. <laughs> just walking down the sidewalk while they're like in the Discord. <laughs> Wait a minute, we got it. We just got called. Too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I. Um, what is happening there? I mean, it's hard. What do you it's, think they would be doing instead, though? Not working. Yeah, working's yeah. stupid. Yeah, working's dumb. Yeah, it's working's for losers. Got it. Got it. So yeah, probably less working. But the average. Babysitter earns twenty dollars and twenty three cents in America. In America, average? In, yes, national average. So what? I mean, That's, there must be babysitters cleaning house, like in Beverly Hills, and if if people Fitch knew York. what like a high end nanny in Beverly Hills makes, they would quit lose, everything. It's six figures, and just go to that six figures. I and mean, what do you got to do? You got to know how to like take no, care of some I'll kids. tell you why it's a hard job is the people you work for are very demanding. Got it. So as long as you have the temperament and you actually you want to it. be around children, yeah. like the people that want to be nannies love being around children and they love it, right? I've seen some hidden nest cam <laughs> videos that yeah. say the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> they just act like it. Yeah. But no, but, yeah, that makes sense. You probably get yelled at. It's probably like being an assistant slash... Yeah, and then you have this like kids. demanding family. Anyone and who can pay you kids. this kind of money, entitled kids, it's like... But six figs. Six figs. Not bad. You can do it forever. You can do it literally until... Yeah, if you, if you work in like a wealthy person's home... You're making crazy bank. And you can just hop around. I mean, if you build a good resume, you can nanny till you're 80. Yeah. Retire. Yeah. yeah, easy. It's a good career path. Yeah. You just have to have the temperament to deal with it. And even if you nannied for a a normal family, you're making really good money. Yeah. Still making like... Well, yeah, if you can't get someone for 25 bucks an hour... No, I mean, like, you can't. I mean, that's pretty damn good. Yeah. And I'm guessing, like, you're, you know, you want someone obviously super legit and whatever, but it's not like that's unreachable. Like, you can get to that point pretty easily. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah. We just shared a tip. Yeah. NFTs aren't working out. Looks like nannying is. Yeah. <laughs> so there you have it. Um, okay, that's all we got. Do we have any shout outs? No shout outs. Oh, I actually have a shout out. Shout out to Katie Wilson. Uh, she was uh, working in the running shoe industry for eight years. She said she felt comfortable, finally left, accepted an offer, and got a big, big promotion Huge. at Wayfair. Wow. Good job, Katie. Good for you. Good job, Katie. See what happens? Think about it. Think about it from her perspective. Eight years. We just read a statistic. Yeah. That people won't stay for three months. <laughs> three months. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. And hey, if it doesn't work out, check out the nannying business. Yeah. <laughs> Just learn how to, what do you have to do to become a, like, do you look up? Like, yeah. So through a service? Yeah. Well, well, if you, like for us, we would do background check, uh, all that stuff. You can use an agency. Got it. And they pay, they're like a recruiter. They take like 15 to 20% of the, f the first year's salary. It's a good hustle. And what, they just do the background check? Yeah. I mean, what's the difference? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Katie, well, congratulations. Yeah. And if things don't work out, there's another path. <laughs> um, all right, good stuff. There it is. Thank you, guys. Uh, we will see you Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.